welcome age of vintage society. Jean Tierney was literally not just that beautiful, but she was so adorable in an adult and sexy way. Not a little girl way like Marilyn Monroe and a lot of other Hollywood baby dolls from that era, but she was so sweet and sexy at the same time and literally mesmerised any man who saw her. How did Jean Tierney survive 32 treatments of electroshock therapy? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Jean Tierney, a sick rose of Hollywood. Hollywood starlet bravely faced her mental health issues. Daryl F. Zanuck, the founder of 20th Century Fox, had some of Hollywood's most beautiful actresses under contract, among them Betty Grable and Marilyn Monroe. But the woman that the mogul would describe as the most beautiful in movie history was Jean Tierney. This wasn't the usual Hollywood hyperbole. The green-eyed beauty with the impossibly chiselled cheekbones was breathtaking. Jean Tierney always been on the short list of noir actresses who could raise our blood pressure, but there are multiple points of interest to this star beyond her heart-stopping sex appeal. Stuff that is perhaps not widely known or considered. Tierney was once one of Hollywood's biggest stars. In the mid-1940s, Jean Tierney seemed to have it all. Beauty, talent, success. By age 25, she was a major star and had been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Ten years later, she was on the verge of being admitted to a series of mental institutions. Tierney, one of Hollywood's most glamorous stars in the 1940s, had a tempestuous emotional life that included hospitalizations and electric shock treatment for depression, as well as a marriage to dress designer Oleg Cassini and romantic liaisons with John F. Kennedy, Howard Hughes and Ali Khan. Though regarded more highly for her lustrous screen presence than for her acting ability, she was nominated for an Oscar for her role as a psychopathically possessive woman in director John M. Stahl's lurid 1944 Mella, Leave Her to Heaven. Tierney had the talent to go with that gorgeous face and was a top box office draw during the 1940s. She would survive several major tragedies in her life during a reign of stardom as a glamorous and talented Hollywood actress. However, her most defining performance that made her a major star was in the Otto Preminger murder mystery movie Laura. She had much success throughout the 1940s and 50s, The Razor's Edge, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, and The Left Hand of God. She made few acting appearances following her hospitalizations in the late 1950s. Her last feature film was The Pleasure Seekers in 1964, but she made some TV appearances after that, including a role in the 1980 miniseries Scruples. You can't help but be moved by the tragic life of actress Jean Tierney. Though endowed with astonishing beauty and talent that won her early fame, a series of misfortunes would eventually bring her to the brink of suicide. Tierney's off-screen life rivalled any of her film roles when it came to sheer drama. Indeed, a chance meeting with a total stranger would set off a catastrophic chain of events with far-reaching consequences. She was known for her spicy social life, including liaisons with Howard Hughes, John F. Kennedy, Tyrone Power and designer Oleg Cassini, who she married. What interests me about Tierney, though, isn't her promiscuity or this libel suit. It's the fact that she lived bravely and honestly despite a lifelong struggle with mental illness. How did such a tragic fall from grace come about? And what can we learn from it about Jean Tierney and the treatment of mental health in mid-20th century America? With prominent cheekbones, luminous skin and the most crystalline green eyes of her day, Jean Tierney's striking good looks helped propel her to stardom. She was born on November 19, 1920 in Brooklyn, New York, the daughter of Howard Sherwood Tierney and Belle Lavina Taylor. She was named after a beloved uncle who died young. She had an elder brother, Howard Sherwood Butch Tierney Jr., and a younger sister, Patricia Pat Tierney, the daughter of a successful insurance broker and ex-physical education instructor, Jean had a privileged upbringing. 
Hailing from an affluent family, Jean Tierney attended some of the best institutions. She was raised in Connecticut and was educated at posh private schools in Switzerland. She stayed in Europe for two years and became fluent in French. In 1938, Jean returned to the US and got enrolled at Miss Porter's school. During her school days, she published her first poem titled Night in a school magazine. She was fond of poetry and occasionally wrote lyrics all throughout her life. It was a family vacation to the West Coast that introduced Jean Tierney to the field of acting. During the holiday, she, along with her family, paid a visit to her cousin, who worked as a producer at Warner Brothers Studios. One look at the 17-year-old green-eyed beauty was enough to have caught the attention of director Anatoly Litvak. He suggested that she should become an actress. However, her father was against the idea of her becoming an actress and prohibited her from signing a contract with Warner Brothers. Jean Tierney was destined to embrace a quiet social life just like her family. Her society debut occurred on September 24, 1938, when she was 17 years old. However, she got fed up with the social life and decided to pursue her ambition of being an actress. Her father said, if Jean is to be an actress, it should be in the legitimate theatre. She took up a course in acting at a small Greenwich Village acting studio in New York. Initially, she was guided by the director and actor Benno Schneider. Later, she became a pupil of Broadway producer-director George Abbott. Thus, like a handful of other stars, she went to Hollywood, already imbued with a good deal of poise and polish. There was no need to rid her of an accent. Tierney had reportedly started smoking after a screening of her first movie to lower her voice, because she felt, I sound like an angry Minnie Mouse. She subsequently became a heavy smoker. She took acting classes, became a Powers model, and got some early work as a supernumerary and an understudy on Broadway. Her father formed a private corporation named Bell Tier to promote her career. All her performances were warmly received by the audiences and critics alike, who found her to be pretty and refreshingly modest. Columbia Pictures signed her to a six-month contract in 1939. She met Howard Hughes, who tried unsuccessfully to seduce her. From a well-to-do family herself, she was not impressed by his wealth. Hughes eventually became a lifelong friend. There is indeed something wildly enigmatic about Tierney, whose quiet, almost demure demeanour added to her impenetrable and icy facade. Until, that is, her face breaks into a smile so sweet that it makes her seafoam green eyes sparkle with a kindly tenderness. It isn't hard to see why Tierney was so often cast as the dream girl, who would wander into the hero's life just in time to save him from his own worst impulses. With her ethereal beauty, she was presented as a goddess, a figure of porcelain with soft chestnut curls and an endearing overbite. Producers kept trying to type me as an exotic, slinky creature, she recalled in her autobiography. That wasn't me. Of all the people I have known, I am probably the least mysterious. Tierney was determined to be more than an alluring portrait in an ornate frame, the image from Laura that has long defined her career. She imbued her characters with her own unwavering gentleness and soulful fragility, turning each woman she played into a flesh-and-blood being with big heart and quick mind. I simply do not want my face to be my talent. There is a palpable emotionality to Tierney's acting, perhaps born out of her many personal tragedies. She was shunned by Hollywood and her parents when she eloped with fashion designer Oleg Cassini in 1941. She then discovered her beloved father had stolen all of her money to pay his own debts and was having an affair with her mother's best friend that soon led to their divorce. Unable to reconcile her father's hypocrisy with his preaching of honesty and morality, Tierney painfully cut off all ties with him. Her heartache continued when she contracted German measles early in her first pregnancy and her daughter, Daria, was born mentally disabled as well as partially blind and deaf and who would eventually be institutionalised. This was common practice at the time, though misguided, but Tierney, overwhelmed by guilt, never recovered from the loss and it marked the beginning of her battle with depression, hallucinations and delusional thinking. Jean would suffer psychologically. She left Hollywood suffering from severe depression. 
Tierney felt her stardom was to blame when she later learned that she had gotten the measles from a fan who had broken quarantine to meet her favourite actress at a Hollywood canteen event. The actress had a second child, Christina, in 1948. During one of many reconciliations she had with Cassini between their initial separation in 1947 and their divorce in 1952. She then began a romance with Ali Khan, but her hopes to marry him were dashed by the Aga Khan, who was wary of another movie star in the family. Ali had formerly been married to Rita Hayworth. Despite the constant struggle, the perpetual battle of fighting myself as she characterised it, Tierney refused to give up. She kept making movies. On the set of The Left Hand of God with Humphrey Bogart, she was virtually incapacitated when not performing. Her condition was so alarming that Bogart informed the studio that she needed help. But even though she was constantly racked by sobs and had fears that people were trying to poison her, she insisted upon finishing the movie, and she did it well. In the 1950s, Tierney's life unravelled even more. At first unable to concentrate and remember her lines, she began to experience paranoia and hallucinations. She would sleep for days and had no appetite. Unfortunately, she got the wrong kind of help, submitting to a series of shock treatments that would severely impair her memory. In 1957, Jean reached her nadir when she had to be talked off the ledge of her mother's apartment building, 14 floors up. Throughout the decade, she would be committed to three sanitariums, enduring cruel conditions and 32 treatments of electroshock therapy at the first two before finally finding the care she needed at the Menninger Clinic. Despite the stigma around mental health during this time, Tierney talked openly about her struggles with manic depression in the press and her 1979 autobiography. Jean Tierney is courageous in speaking out about her struggles with severe bouts of depression, a taboo subject for most of the 20th century. I knew nothing about electric shock therapy and I don't think the doctors at the time knew much more. It was then considered a scientific breakthrough although opinion was divided about the potential for long-term harm. The treatment was developed in Italy in 1938. Doctors soon began to use it to treat schizophrenia and cases of severe depression. An electrode was attached to each temple and an alternating current of 80 or 90 volts passed between the electrodes for a split fraction of a second. In the early days of this therapy, the moment of violent seizure often produced fractures and dislocated bones. The use of muscle relaxants solved that problem. When it shocked its victims into some measure of sanity, it seemed to do so by inducing a temporary amnesia. It triggered a physical feeling that was comfortable and benign. You can hardly be depressed over something you no longer remember. The results often were so dramatic that helpless people could soon manage everyday things that once seemed intimidating. Like Tierney herself, who fought to become an actress rather than the society wife her family wished her to be, her characters frequently had a degree of rebellion that contradicted their serene manner. These women yearned to take control of their lives, whether that means a career, social mobility or personal freedom. But the most ambitious Tierney character of all is Ellen Berendt, the unnerving femme fatale. For the performance that is both intoxicating and terrifying, Tierney crafted the most unforgettable role of her career as a woman whose obsessive love for her husband destroys everyone around her. With her mental health finally stabilised by the early 60s, she made a brief comeback but retired from films shortly thereafter. She married oil man W. Howard Lee in 1960, who'd been previously wed to Hedy Lamarr, and they moved to Texas. Jean outlived her second husband by 10 years, dying in Houston of emphysema in 1991. In yet another regrettable twist, she'd only taken up smoking a half century earlier to make her on-screen voice sound huskier. Though fate wasn't kind to Jean Tierney, it was to her many fans, who will forever appreciate her hypnotic allure in timeless movies like Laura and so many others. We love you Jean, how could we not? Jean Tierney was a Hollywood goddess of Hollywood goddesses, and someone who wasn't just beautiful and adorable, but someone who was extremely special because of how sweet and beautiful that she was, who is also one of the best actresses of her generation, if not ever, because of her beauty and ability to own every scene she was ever part of. 
If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Jean Tierney? She was the most fragile and the strongest woman at the same time during her tragic life.